Friends, uh, I want to talk to you today about um, self-forgetfulness. I was uh, going to the dry cleaner in Houston, Texas, maybe two, three years ago, and I pulled up and I got my shirts out of the back and I was going to take them in. And as I'm walking toward the door across the parking lot, this car comes screaming up and stops and jerks to a halt. And a woman jumps out and she pulls the back door open. She grabs her stuff. She starts marching across the parking lot. She's clearly trying to get ahead of me. Now, I was there first, friends. I was parked. I had my clothes. I was walking across the lot. And I picked up my pace just a little bit. And she's picking up her pace horribly. And it's going to be a tie. Now, in Sandlot baseball, tie goes to the runner. But in walking into the dry cleaner, Ty goes to the woman. And so I stopped, and she went in ahead of me. And I was fuming. Why was I fuming? Because I was there first. I deserved to go ahead of her. She clearly did something unkind and selfish. And I was upset because I was thinking about me. There is one person in this world whom I think about far too much. Suppose you've been married about three months. Suppose your name is Stephen. And you're going on a road trip with your brand new wife. And you come to Bucky's and you pull into Bucky's. You get some fuel. You use the restroom. You buy a soda. You're ready to get on the road again. And uh, you have been a bachelor for 20 plus years. And you walk out to your car, and you get in, and you drive off, and you're about a half hour down the road, and your cell phone rings. And you look at it, and it's your wife. And you have forgotten her at Bucky's. And you turn around, and you drive back, and you've been gone for an hour. Would you rather forget your wife at Bucky's or get rabies? I'd rather get rabies. You see, it's not good to forget about most people. It's not good to forget that they are with you in the car. It's not good to forget their birthday. It's not good to forget their anniversary. It's not good to forget their needs. It's not good to forget what they ask you to do. But in my life, even though it's not good to forget, I think about one person far too much. And the person I think about far too much is me. I think about me getting ahead of a woman at the dry cleaner. I think about me getting what I want. I think about me being happy. I think about me getting my way. I think about me far too much. I uh, want to talk to you today about this whole issue of could I forget about myself a little bit more. There is an outline online. Is this true, Sam? How does a person get there? Notes.loftcitychurch.com. If you want to do that, you can follow along with us. Here's the core idea I want you to think about. God-honoring people like Jesus are self-forgetful. They think about themselves far less than they used to when they came to faith in Christ. If you read the book of Mark, the book of Mark, the basic theme is Jesus Christ is the perfect and tireless servant of God and man. If you read the Gospel of Mark, you will find 143 acts of service that Jesus did for God or for man. He's extremely self-forgetful. There's a man by the name of Timothy Keller. He's a pastor of Redeemer Church in New York City. He wrote a book called The Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness. There is a great freedom in thinking about myself less. I want to give you some examples from the life of Jesus about how he was able to think about himself less and therefore be free and therefore have a greater impact on the people around him. John chapter 4, verse 34. John 4, 34, one of the most powerful verses in the New Testament. Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. If you know this story, it is amazing that he's speaking to her. He's a traveling rabbi. He has disciples who follow him. He's speaking to a woman. A rabbi would never speak to a woman. He's speaking to an immoral woman. He knows she's had six men. A rabbi would never speak to an immoral woman. He's speaking to a Samaritan She's half Jewish. She's half not Jewish. They have perverted the Jewish faith. A rabbi would never speak to a Samaritan. And here is this rabbi who is speaking to a person 
with compassion, despite the fact that no other rabbi would. And one of the things he says after he has encountered her, his disciples were bringing him food. He didn't want to eat. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Jesus was nourished by doing the Father's will, not by doing his own will. He was self-forgetful enough to say, it's the Father's will that's far more important to me than my will. When I'm thinking about myself all the time, it's my will that really is the most important. So, Dave Gibson's been married for 39 years, haven't left my wife at a rest stop recently, but I've been married for 39 years, and uh, having been married for 39 years, I pretty well know my wife's preferences. So if we're going out to supper, she wants to go to Chinese, and I want to go to Mexican. I mean, it's just, we've been in this pattern for a long time. So we get in the car, where are we going? If I'm going to be a self-forgetful person, we're going to Chinese. Kathy Gibson wants to retire in Boise, Idaho. I want to retire in Missoula, Montana. Where are we going to retire? Boise, Idaho. Kathy Gibson wants to stay home and have a quiet evening at home. I want to go to the party. To be a self-forgetful person is to be a person who's willing to set aside their own will. Jesus said in John 4, 34, I am willing to do the Father's will. I get nourished by doing his will. Sometimes being self-forgetful means I don't get my own way. Second passage, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26, verses 39, 42, and 44. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he goes there and he prays, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus deferred to the Father's will, even though it meant him dying a very brutal death. He was going to be hanging naked in front of a huge group of people. He was going to be in bitter pain. He was going to be beaten. He was going to have a crown of thorns on his head. He was going to be ridiculed and mocked and spit on, and he was going to die of suffocation. Do you know how a person dies when they're crucified? They slump down. They lose their strength. Their chest fills up with fluid, and they suffocate. And the only way to get air is to excruciatingly pull yourself up and breathe, and then you slump back down. I mean, it's not the, the pain of being nailed through your hands and feet is enough. But you die of suffocation. A way to go. And Jesus said, the Father's will is more important to me that I would be willing to die this brutal death. To be self-forgetful means that sometimes I need to defer on the big things. We're not talking Chinese versus Mexican here, friends. We're talking the big things. That's how self-forgetful Jesus was. Luke chapter 23, verse 34, please. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's dying for the sins of mankind. He is being murdered by the Roman people and the Jewish people, and he prays in verse 34 of Luke, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 23. Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. He was so self-forgetful that he prayed for the people murdering him. Sometimes to be self-forgetful means that I need to pray for people and defer to people who are harming me. Defer to people who are harming me. That's the nature of Jesus and self-forgetfulness. Drop down to verse 43, please. And he said to him, the, the thief on the cross who had expressed faith in Christ, truly I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Jesus was so self-forgetful that in his personal pain, he was thinking about a criminal. <clears throat> Sometimes to be self-forgetful means that we have to help people who deserve nothing. Jesus was thinking about this man who deserved nothing. He was getting exactly what he deserved. And Jesus thought about him. Another passage, please. John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. Jesus still on the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour on, the disciple took her 
into his own household. Jesus is in indescribable pain, and he's thinking about his mother. He's focused on someone else. Friends, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very good with pain, but when I get in pain, I think about me. When I get in emotional pain or physical pain, I think about me. I think about how much I hate it, and I think about how much I want out of it, and I am really, really not very focused on other people when I'm in personal pain. Sometimes self-forgetfulness means that I help other people even when I'm in great personal need, even when there's a whole lot going on in my own personal life. Verse 30, Jesus on the cross. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. This is a loaded verse. Uh, the, part of the reality is Jesus' life wasn't taken away. He gave it away. He didn't die because his physical body ran out of strength. He died because he said to his spirit, go away from me. He gave up his life for us. And when he was dying in this terrific pain, he says it is finished. It's a single word which is pronounced tetelestai. It's an accounting term. It's like when you get a bill and it's been paid off and you stamp on it with a big red stamp that says paid in full. And when Jesus died, before he dismissed his spirit, the last thing he said about the sins of the entire world, yours and mine, past, present, and future, the last thing he said was paid in full. Jesus was so self-forgetful that he was focusing on the needs of other people and the debt of other people he said it's paid in full. Sometimes to be self-forgetful means to serve people who will reject you later. To serve people who have no heart for you whatsoever. Jesus paid for us in that way. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. I want to read part of that to you. Philippians 2, 5. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of man, being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is like a six-fold step down. He goes from God all the way down to crucifixion. Friends, Jesus was and is the most magnificent compelling being who could possibly exist in the vernacular he's got it made he's at the top of the best ladder you could be at the top of he's god and being at the top of that amazing ladder being this incredible being being this beating being that we cannot even imagine this being who will cause us to get on our faces when we see him being at that place he stepped down all the way to death on a cross Sometimes being self-forgetful means that we don't pull rank. We don't trump situations with our own power. We don't trump situations because we're powerful or because we have money or because somebody is below us in some sort of an organizational chart. To be self-forgetful means that I resist the temptation to pull rank. Jesus didn't pull rank with us. He had rank. He has rank. He doesn't pull rank. Final passage I want to think about today is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. <clears throat> this is an extremely powerful passage. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. <clears throat> At the risk of insulting your intelligence, let me read it again. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus was so self-forgetful, he was willing to impoverish himself for us. We, in our incredible spiritual poverty, were pulled up because Jesus was willing to impoverish himself. Sometimes self-forgetfulness means that I make great personal sacrifice for the benefit of others. That I give up remarkable resources for the benefit, for the well-being of others. There's so many upsides, friends, to being self-forgetful. 
to thinking more about others and less time about myself. There's the benefit of imitating Christ. There's the benefit of blessing others, bringing glory to God. There's the benefit of, as Tim Keller says, being free. Because when I'm self-forgetful, I don't need to go around pouting when you got your way and I didn't get my way. When I'm self-forgetful, I'm free. I don't have to go around pouting when you said something ugly about me. I don't have to go around pouting when things didn't go my way. I don't have to go about pouting when you don't treat me well or when you don't thank me or when I don't get something I deserve, when I don't get the raise or don't get the promotion or don't get the recognition. I'm free. I don't have to obsess on it. I don't have to spend the rest of my day or the rest of my week saying, I deserved to be treated better. Let's have personal freedom. It's a huge thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a massive blessing. I was in Philadelphia probably 15 years ago. I was renting a car. Uh, I was at the counter. There was a huge number of people, a huge number of people waiting on us. I go to the place. I give them all my stuff. I sign all the papers. I'm ready to go. I'm handed the keys. I'm told where it's parked. And I have this piece of paper in my hand that I don't need. And I lay it on the counter and I say to the woman, will you please throw this away from me? And she looked at me and with an incredible snarl in her voice, she said, I don't do other people's trash. And she walked away. Now, friends, when someone does that, let's say at the Hertz counter, I don't know if it's Hertz or not. You know, I'm, I'm in a great place of power. I just, you know, I can beat on the counter and say, I demand to speak to the manager. You're going to pay for that. I mean, it was a simple request. There was a garbage can by her. She doesn't do that. In the kindness of God, I was able to pick up the paper, walk away very quietly, threw it away myself, never said a word to the management about it. To be self-forgetful is to be free of the need to get revenge. It's to be free of the need to pout. It's to be free of this incredible, horrible struggle in life that focuses on myself and puts me in bondage to how life goes for myself. And being self-forgetful has huge applications for marriage. It has huge applications for parenting, huge applications for the church, huge applications for our work life. There's a terrific freedom in being a self-forgetful person. A number of years ago, I was in counseling. Uh, I was having a horrible struggle in life. God, God brought to me a, a wonderful woman who would just love God, huge insight into the word, very biblical person, compassionate, truthful, courageous, insightful. And I'm sitting in Karen Anderson's office one day, and I had seen this movie called The Big Fish. Anybody by wild chance seen The Big Fish? It's an older movie. There's one. The Big Fish is an artsy, bizarre, literary film. But the basic storyline is there's this father who's bigger than life, and he takes up all the oxygen in every room he's in, and he, everybody's in his shadow, and his son just got sick of being in his father's shadow, and his son got married and moved away and never went to see his father. He just was sick of being underneath his father and his father taking all oxygen and everything being about his father. And as his father is dying, he decides, I need to go home. I need to make peace with my dad. I don't want to do this. I don't like the man. I'm sick of being in his shadow. But he goes home anyway to see his father and try and reconcile with his father. And I'm telling this whole story of this movie I've just seen to my counselor, Karen. Karen, this hooked into me so strongly because my father is the big fish. Whenever I'm with my father, it's all about dad. It's all about what he wants to do. It's all about his one-liners. It's all about his gun conversations. It's all about dad. I'm sick of this. My dad is the big fish. I'm saying this to Karen with incredible energy. You can feel the energy in me right now. And Karen looked at me and said, Dave, your dad's not the big fish. It's you. You're the big fish, Dave. You're the one who has the one-liners. You're the one in the room taking all the oxygen. You're the one about whom it always has to be about Dave. I, she didn't say this with any malice. She said this with utter truthfulness. And I stood there, and the Spirit of God said to me, she's right, Dave. It's all about you. It's all about you being in the room. I haven't made a lot of progress on this. I know about it. I struggle with it. Chelsea knows me. Chelsea knows me in the workplace. Chelsea knows my one-liners. She knows how easy it is for me to come in and take over a situation. I wrote on the back of my Bible, David, 
were you sinfully, mistakenly thinking this was about you? It's about Jesus. It's about others. Stop hogging the oxygen. Be more of a self-forgetful person. There's this huge blessing, friends. Jesus perfected self-forgetfulness. If I could think about myself less, if every situation didn't have to be about me, if I could be slighted or not get my way or be passed over or be forgotten or not be thanked and still be self-forgetful, just, I just gained this great freedom. God gets more glory. Other people get more encouragement. I get more joy if I'm thinking less about myself. I want to return to one of these passages I read to you when I said that Jesus when he was hanging on the cross, dismissed his spirit, and before he did, he said to Telestai, it is finished. It is paid in full. And Jesus, in his amazing self-forgetfulness, was willing to pay for our sin, even at great personal expense. And we're coming today to the Lord's Supper to take the supper together, and we're going to ask you to come up there whenever you want, take the elements, take them back to your seat and hold them, Pastor Sam's going to come up and lead us in the Lord's Supper. And as you do that, will you please reflect on the self-forgetfulness of Jesus Christ? Reflect on this, this God, this God-man who was willing to hang on the cross to pay the ultimate price to not only die give up his life, but to die in utter brutality and embarrassment and shame and pain and what for me would be terror, the terror of suffocating, Think about the Lord Jesus, who because of our great sin, because of our great need, was willing to pay for our sin, was willing to be self-forgetful, was willing to step down six levels from being God to dying on a cross, who was so self-forgetful that my need was more important to him than his rank. Father, thank you so much for your son, we bless you today for this son of yours who was utterly, amazingly, continually self-forgetful. 143 acts of service in one gospel. Stepping down six levels from God to death on the cross. Deeply concerned about Dave Gibson when he himself was in personal pain. Thank you for your son and for his self forgetfulness will you build into us a remarkable self forgetfulness remarkable ability to care about the needs of others to care about your will and in the process give us the freedom of not obsessing on ourselves we need your help in this we ask for it in Jesus name